Are you ready for the best Kansas City Chiefs insight? Welcome to Four Guys in a Bar podcast sponsored by Chief Splits and presented by Dave Purdy with Supreme Lending. For your mortgage solutions, call Dave today at 816-405-5831. That's 816-405-5831 because he's pretty good. Here's your Chief Splits host, Nick Athen, with Lou Montagna, Andre Tillman, and Hence Talk. Welcome back to the next edition of Four Guys in a Bar, presented by Chief Splits. I am your host, Nick Athen, a publisher of ChiefSplits.com. You can check us out there. Check us out on YouTube at Chief Splits. I'm joined by my partner, Mr. Hans Todd, with Bowtie Sports, LLC. You can check his show out every Saturday, 1 o'clock Central Time, with uh, the coach, Andre, and they break down local Kansas City news and had a great show on Saturday. I tried to participate as, as much as my mind would allow. It's been a crazy weekend for me. But first, before we get started, I want to talk about uh, the first of two sponsors here at Four Guys in a Bar. My good friend, Mr. Eric Haynes at the Eric Haynes Group. He is your trusted real estate advisor. He is my trusted real estate advisor. We finally closed on the house last week. Eric was very instrumental in making sure that everything got done, made sure that we were happy. All the documents were done properly. We got our keys. We started to move in the process. And I'm telling you, it was a lengthy, it was a lengthy period of time. And this is what make this is what makes Eric Haynes such a great real estate agent and a really good friend and a good person. He took care of every detail. So if you're looking to buy a house, you're looking to sell a house in the Kansas City metropolitan area or the surrounding communities, there's no one I trust more than Mr. Eric Haynes. So give him a call at 816. 816- 729-3785. You can email him at esellskc at gmail.com. And Eric, personal note, Emily Zale and I are very fortunate. We uh, have you as a friend. And we appreciate all the work you did. So uh, everybody, you need a realtor, Eric Haynes, 816-729-3785. Proud sponsor, Chief Who? <clears throat> that is correct. And uh, joining on the show, Mr. Lou Montagna, the other senior member of the crew, and the young gun, Mr. Andre Tillman, Coach Dre, wearing his NFL hat. And he is a he is a he is a hat connoisseur. So on every show, you probably will find a different hat. And very, uh, very, very, cool. very nondescript. Yes. Sporting the shield today. A very, <clears throat> a very Rob Lowe type thing to do. Uh, yes, but, uh, but you gotta love it. The fact that hey. It's Absolutely. a cheap show, but I'm repping the shield. It's all boys. it's all good, man. I got about 150 hats, so I'll probably send you a few out of the collection that are just wow. I don't I don't do anything with them. I just have too many. So uh hey, we're gonna have a great show today. Uh the Chiefs kind of had a little press due today, and Andy spoke and Patrick spoke. And I believe Nick Bolton spoke as well. Um, we'll get into that. Obviously, on Friday, you guys did a bang up job on the NFL draft. We were signing the papers and doing all the house stuff. On Friday, so I was unable to make the show. But uh, uh, from what I saw, and uh, you guys seem to have a good time with it, so I appreciate you filling in the gaps. This is your area, guys. This is your strength. Um, you know, I'm going to do my my personal Chiefs mock draft and put it up on uh, put it up on Monday show on Monday. But um, anyway, guys, appreciate the the extra lifting and uh, lots to talk about today, man. I tell you, Chiefs Chiefs business just never stops humming. Our pleasure, Nick. And I, I'd i like to compare the length of our last show versus how long it took you to close on your house. Yeah, it was a lengthy, uh, it was a lengthy process. As, as I said, guys, you know, being self-employed, it is a completely different animal than it used to be when I was in the business working with self-employed individuals. Um, it just took a little extra time. But, uh, you know, Eric, Eric did what he had to do. Dave did what he had to do. Dave's company, Dave's boss, everybody got involved and and it, it all worked out in the end. And that's what you want. You want to find people who are going to fight for you. So, yes, it was lengthy, but uh, the wife has been smiling ever since we signed the papers Friday. So happy wife, happy life. Winner, that's just all there winner, is to it. Chicken dinner. That's Absolutely. right. So it's all good. So she's over the house right now cleaning and I'm doing the podcast. The man's uh, got to work. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Hey, 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 I know the process, it, it, sometimes it takes longer than the, but it all got done. I also want to give a shout out to my auntie. Hello. Thank you for joining us in here. And everybody Pamela else. D. Todd. Shout her <laughs> out. Say, say her name. Hey, thank you, everybody, for everybody for joining in. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Thank you for not 
forgetting to hit that subscribe button and share away. Hey, I don't care if you share it five times a day, six times a day. Just keep hitting that share button. Mm -hmm. Give it a love. Because we wake up in the morning, we get this show on the road. Uh, we got to hear Lou, you know, go back and forth. You know what I mean? When we try to get the show ready. But it gets done. <laughs> I'll just play it. Well, we got, we got, uh, eventually, we got, uh... eventually, eventually the sausage gets made. Yeah. That's right. Ah! You, you, the folks definitely watch it. You do not want to see that part of the process, but probably not. Hopefully, hopefully the finished, the finished product is, uh, is oh, up to stuff, so. It does. Oh, good. so at the press conference, you know, it's the latest news on what she writes. Uh, my guy, still my guy, still got love for the kid. Gotta support but, him. Uh, you know I me, mean? but uh, <clears throat> what, what did Indy Reid said at the press conference? I'm going to put on the screen. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, there are definitely some things said. Um, according to Harold Her Arcoons, uh, Andy says he has had an opportunity to talk to Rashi Rice, let the legal process take its course. Reid expects Rice to participate in the voluntary Zoom, Zoom meetings, which is phase one of the organized team activities. He was, prior to the accident, working with Patrick Holmes down in Texas. We don't know at this point whether he's going to resume. Patrick kind of indicated a little bit today that that might be, might be possible. It just depends. Uh, but the bottom line is I think the chiefs are, are, are smart. Um, I think they, they kind of know what's going on. I think they probably have a pretty good idea what the punishment is. <clears throat> Listen, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There is, you know, uh, the Kansas City star Tor uh, Toriano Porter, who's, I don't know, some board of writers for the star put a hit piece out there on, on Rice saying the Chiefs should cut him. Um, you know, other people say he's going to be in jail a long time. We don't know anything, but the bottom line is this. There are a lot more NFL players, Major League Baseball players, kids in college sports who have done far, far, far worse where lives were lost and things that happened and they got second chances I'm not condoning what Rasheed Rice did. It was a stupid thing to do. He's going to pay a hefty, hefty price financially. He's going to pay a hefty price in the respect in that locker room. And he's going to have to make amends on all accounts. And if he does, the Kansas City Chiefs will have Rasheed Rice on the field at some point next season, as long as he stays out of trouble. I get the impression from people that I spoke to that he is obviously taking this seriously. He knows he's screwed up. He's going to do whatever it takes to – to restore the faith in the fan base and in the, in the, and in the locker room. But there's just some people out there who just are unwilling to get people a second chance. And again, I've seen a lot worse. I am not going to name situations or people or events that I'm aware of. I'm simply going to say this. There are people out there who think where she rice, it's a bad egg. And that's not the case. He's a good kid. He's never been in trouble before. Wasn't in trouble at SMU. Wasn't in trouble during the Chiefs for his rookie year. And without him, they don't win a Super Bowl. Now, that doesn't mean, again, that I'm condone and that I'm not going to condone what he did because what he did, again, is stupid. So for everybody out there, just take a breath. Andy Reid and Brett Veach and Clark Hunt will ultimately decide what they're going to do with She Rice. And you can write all the stuff you want to, pro or negative, but it's their decision and their decision only based on the actions of She Rice moving forward. Anything else that you hear is probably just 15 minutes of Twitter fame. And that's a lot of that's been going on. And again, I hope the kid straightens himself out because I think he's, he's worth, he's worth salvaging. And I think, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I, I think he's going to come through. I mean, he's going to come through this now. He'll be light in the wallet. That's for sure. But he, he's going to come through. Well, writers write. You know, people like us speak. I mean, these stories come out and, you know, opinions are thrown out. Now, sometimes there's opinions that are just kind of way out of left field or you, know, you don't know how really informed they are. Or just, you know, just clickbait, selling newspapers, whatever you want to say to just ultimately say the Chiefs should cut ties with the with the kid without having all the facts in front of you is kind of irresponsible. But. Again, he he kind of uh, catches it or couches it with they should consider it. So it's really not as horrible as all that. 
at at the end of the day but you know if you don't have all the facts to put something out li yeah. like that what people are going to see is cut ties get rid of the guy forget it whatever hell yeah. we saw uh, jalen carter was involved in a situation previous yeah, you know, right exactly. before getting drafted and somebody somebody died i mean what a teammate you know it doesn't matter who it was but there was loss of life and some other injuries so uh, again, we'll see how this plays out. Didn't affect his draft status at all. Right. I mean, he did slip a little bit, but it wasn't like he dropped out of the first round. He was still a top 10 pick. Yeah. Uh, so, didn't, so didn't particularly play well last year either, but that's another story. <laughs> again. Yeah. I mean, that, that, like you said, it's a story for another day, how he played. I mean, that's just the, I guess the opinion part of it, but just the similar situation <laughs> that yes, there's going to be punishment. Yes. It's going to be doled out. He was eventually forthright with the right people, with the Chiefs, hopefully. And as long as he does that, I think they will give him another chance. Yeah, the league so. will come down, you know, six-game suspension, eight-game suspension, whatever they come up with. But I think for sure he will get another opportunity. And, and again, the Chiefs have to decide if they want to go that route. And if you look at the Kareem Hunt situation, I think it was more how he handled it with the Chiefs that got him cut. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't so much what he did. It was how he handled the after. You don't lie to the owner of the team and get away and, and think that that's okay. Right. Um, for sure. I mean, what, what do you guys think? I mean, you know, I mean, hence you're a, you've been banging on the drum for him from day one. Um, yeah. you, you're obviously not going to let go of it now, but you know, this is, this is, this is personal for you, I think. So just, yeah, I, I, I feel like, uh, everyone makes mistakes and nobody, nobody's <laughs> saying is equally better than nobody else. Everybody's saying is, is equal to the same. You can't judge off everybody off the one mistake they make and, uh, okay. I'll, out, 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 uh, grow what they're going to be and who they're going to turn out to be. So I feel like this, if this is not a lesson learned from him, I hope the kid changes, um, behavior or you know the people that he hang around or whoever influencing him but if he influencing others i hope he can change his ways to not influence everybody else to do mm -hmm. uh bad mistakes like this because anything could have happened you know what i mean uh that the kids could have been hurt people could it could have been it could have been a worse outcome but uh him as a now him as an athlete he's an amazing athlete um, I, I would like to stick and have him if I'm the Chiefs. I'm sticking around and I'm not gonna just jump the gun. I'm gonna see mm -hmm. what the kid, uh, what, what he learned from. Is he gonna own up to his mistakes? Now, for me, walking away from the scene of any crime, um, shouldn't have been done, but again, we nope. make mistakes. Some he wasn't even mistakes. charged for that. No, it's not <laughs> one of the charges, but the, those, uh, you know, but some, <laughs> some people make mistakes, and but to get again. If Rasheed Rice can hear me, if you see come across this show, change the behavior. Think before you do things, and you are a different person, not just because um, the athlete you are, just because the money you're making now. Yep. So, and, and when you climb into the top, it's not enough oxygen for everybody. So, if you're trying to go down and try to give everybody a, a, a hand <laughs> in the plate, trying to fix everything, make everybody's life right, it ain't going to work. Because you're going to find and find yourself trying to please everybody, and next thing you know, you you doing you know you in situations like this or even worse situations. So that's what I got to say about it. He's still my coach? guy. He still got, put the floors on him for me. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna say just learn from your mistakes and move forward. It's hard to come back from that after that speech. Go ahead. Nah, just, just 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 learn from your mistakes <laughs> and move forward. That's it. That's all I got to say. Learn from your mistakes because. We, he's young. He's young. You know, got a little change. Mm -hmm. Young, got a little excitement. You know, like I'm not going to throw stones at this young man. You know, he's still very productive. But just learn from your mistakes. That's it. Learn from your mistakes and move forward. <clears throat> and, and accept that it would accept whatever's going to come down the pipe. Yeah. Whatever comes down the pipe, whatever comes your way, you got to accept. Whatever it comes down the pipe, yes. <laughs> accept it. Yeah. <laughs> accept it. But Andy Reid have said, you know, a lot of people out here just out here that's doing like that. We don't have a left tackle. But Andy Reid said, you know, Wade Morris is, you know, back, you know, back working, and he uh, it's going to be competition at the position. What you guys say about that? Um, he let us know what he said um, here. Nick, go ahead. Um, yeah, and he says that uh, Morris is back in town uh, working. Adds that uh, he got a good intro in 2023. 
he needs to improve. And the quote is, I think he understands what it takes to be an every down guy at the spot. There will be competition, which tells me that, you know, there could be a veteran that they signed. Um, I still like the kid from the Jets, Beckty, I think is his name. Um, you know, former first round pick was an absolute bust in New York. Probably would come to Kansas City cheap. I think they're going to draft a tackle in round one or two would be my guess. I think they're going to go uh, tackle wide receiver and possibly a tight end one, two, three um, in, in the first three rounds. That's just my thoughts, but you know, I mean, Morris, he was pretty good at run blocking his pass blocking as he played in more consecutive day, games um, taken up for Donovan Smith um, didn't quite get the job done. And in fact, he, he caused a few mistakes that were pretty bad and uh, some situations that Patrick Mahomes just didn't have the opportunity to complete, which could have been some big plays. But again, he'll learn. He's a rookie. He was a rookie last year. He was thrown into it. Um, but his his growth is huge. I mean, they don't have Nick Allegretti there. You know, they don't have a lot of depth. They have virtually actually they have they have no depth on the offensive line right now outside of uh, you know. I mean, I looked at the. I don't even think they have two offensive linemen at this point that are on the roster that can play either guard or, or tackle. So that's something that's going to be addressed in the draft for sure. Well, well Morris, you got to give an opportunity. I mean, they took him, <laughs> they took him re- relatively high. So they like the kid coming out and mm-hmm. he's had, you know, better portion of a, a full season playoffs and so forth. First time playing at a premium <laughs> position in the NFL he wasn't a high, you know, he wasn't a, like a first round pick. So you have to give him an opportunity to to grow into the position. So, right. yeah, there will be competition. There's competition at every position. So you can say that. Is that like mm-hmm. an inkling to maybe they sign something, maybe bring back Donovan Smith? I don't, know about, I don't know about Mekhi Becton. I mean, if he was a veteran that had had some productive snaps and productive years, maybe you'd think about it. But I don't think – he he might be he would be behind Wanye Morris one learning the playbook and two I don't know that he's really put anything on tape that says that he has a chance to be what they thought he was going to be right on the other hand Veach loves those first round guys yeah, he did that, that's the whole you know, key that kind, that kind of fall fall out of favor now it depends on where the Chiefs had him rated coming out. If right. they really like them, then sure. I, I think that would be a thing that they would look at. But in my opinion, I don't see him as an upgrade at this point or really going to be a big help to Wanye. I mm-hmm. think it's just up to Andy Heck, the rest of that room, to kind of lift him up a little bit. And, and he knows better than anybody what he's got to work on. So we yeah, just got to give him an exactly. opportunity, more reps, more reps, more reps. Well, yeah, well, his yeah. pass blocking not bad. I mean, he, he was a 63, 63% pass blocking grade for Morris. So Morris is not bad. His run blocking sucks. But other than that, he's not bad. I mean, as a, as a, being a Kansas City Chiefs fan, you, I mean, you do got faith in him. You do got faith in him. And you, and you want him, you want to see him do, want to see him have a good second year, right, with, with the Kansas City Chiefs. But at the same time, should they go out there and get another, another tackle? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe competition, two. Hey, maybe yeah. two. Maybe two. So, again, like, I like Morris, but at the same time, I will particularly go for a tackle in the draft still. Yeah. I won. Thanks. I've given a guy a chance. I'm with Frank. Frank, we you're not the only one that's high on Morris. Give him a chance. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm chance. high on him, too. Give the guy. Like I said, the guy has – the guy, you give him a chance. You got him in the third round, man. You got him in the third round. You got to see what he got in. <laughs> Man was getting beat down. Okay, no, right, well, just, just a rookie. A lot of maybe learn, maybe, maybe, maybe learn from his beating. Maybe learn from his yeah. Beating. A, lot, a, lot, a lot of rookies get beat down. You, you, you said you say Joshua Williams was getting beat. Then he learned. Then he started getting getting better. So it took some like, time. It did. It did. It did. It did. Nick, Nick, you just okay. stated it. It no. took some time. Hold right. on. Well, break. Okay. Breaking news, guys. Mango's back. Had a little Wi-Fi issue. Uh, let's restart the show. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but Thanks again, for coming back, Mango. But again, yeah. again, man, if I if I'm if I'm, if I'm not the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm going to see what I got in way more. You know, I'm going to see yeah. what I got. No, they're going to find out. You know, if the kids there, you know, he, 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 he was, you know, I feel like he played good in the run game. Dre said he didn't. 
that's that, that's what he was good at the run game. He, he was clearing holes for, for what I see. But also, what uh, you know, what happened at um, uh, you know, at the stadium today, what they're talking about, you know, what I mean, the kid Lewis, I probably said his last name, which is the the kid from uh. Uh, that the kid they just signed. What's his last name? Louis what Reese. Got? Zemet. 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 Hey, stay with me, Bo. Zemet, sir. Number, yeah. Zemet. Zemet, number nine. Okay. We're going to call him the Z-Man. Oh, he's wearing, he's wearing uh, Juju's number, huh? Nice. Hey, speaking, yeah. hey, speaking, speaking of Juju, he had, a, he had an eventful weekend, didn't he? I, oh, yeah, I didn't see it, so he I, wait, I can't he, wait, he, he did he did wait till Belichick left before he got a little nutty there. But, yeah, well, but he, he wants out too. He you wants out too. You can't make this stuff up. Just, I know. Geez, all right, let's talk. About, uh, all right, so let's talk about um, L L R Z is what we're going to call him. Um, Andy Court. Uh, he's somewhat familiar with the sport. He sure has had success in rugby. We'll start him off at the running back position. He'll get used to some. He, You'll get used to some of these classes through our Zooms and some of these plays. We'll see where it goes from there. But obviously, he's a wild card. I mean, I I had been inundated gracefully, and I appreciate it from a lot of guys overseas who have watched him play rugby. And it's kind of all over the board. The majority think his game will transition to the NFL. Now, how much he can master the playbook and how involved he's going to be, <clears throat> that's an Andy Reid decision. But – you know, I like I like this. Um, I think this is great. I think uh, you just don't know what you have. There's going to be no film on him, so teams can't scout for him. You know, point, he's going to probably play some special teams. Um, you know, is he a gimmick guy? Who cares if if you know if you put him out there on the pitch and you get him outside with his speed and his and his and the power that he runs with? You know, he's not going to be Christian Okoye or anything. But remember, Christian Okoye. You know, he was a disc thrower, and he just kind of started picking up running the football, and and he had an mm, amazing point. career. Good so point. you never know. You take a flyer on, on guys like this, and, you know, he's with the right team. There's no pressure. You know, he doesn't even count on the roster. Um, you know, he's their international signing. Of all the international signings, this is probably the best and probably the one that has the, the, the best chance to stick as far as this year's class goes. Um, and actually make the 53-man roster when it's all said and done. All right, yeah, Nick, have I'm, you been I'm, to a I'm, soccer I'm, I'm, game? Have you been to a soccer game recently? Did we lose Nick? It's, it's been a while. It's been okay. a while. So this is a football show. We call it a field, a gridiron. We don't call it a pitch, Okay. <laughs> we you know what i'm talking gonna, about are we gonna are we gonna be that show now <laughs> on nah, look, man, again but again again uh, uh, i know mango guys, knows what you're talking about so is he the x factor for the kansas city chief yes he is because again that was a good observation the x factor we don't to, even know if he's gonna make the team but he is again, gonna make the team sir. but then again look how he's been though i put it like yeah you look at it Look at his legs, man. Jesus Christ. He got it. He, I told you. All that he I makes said, Christian but, Okoye's legs look small. Mm. <laughs> I was saying, but but again, this kid probably come out of nowhere. I'm not knocking nobody. You know, Lou said he probably ain't gonna make the team. No, I said we, we not, don't we, got, we don't know if he makes the team yet. So we're already talking about him as an X factor. <laughs> Let's make the squad first. <laughs> I think he's got a chance. <laughs> I'm optimistic. Let's just put it that I got, way. Well, good. I'm I'm I am too. Good. I am too. I just don't want to put the cart ahead of the horse and all of a sudden we're That's like right. fitting him into the offense. So, we don't know if he's so gonna Lou be on the said team Lou wa- Lou wanna see the proof. Lou wanna see what can this dog do, right? New dog, get the, new owner. Get the what pad, can the, get the dog do? Right. Get the pads on. Let's see what happens when he gets I, that. When, when like Leo or somebody rings him up in the first live period. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Throw that. Throw, throw that dog in the zoo with the other animals. You know what I'm saying? Throw, throw him he in the is zoo a great quick. athlete see, see though, he and he does look like he's got the body for the game. Let's just see if he can do it. There's plenty of athletes mm-hmm. out there that aren't going to be good football players. That's true. He's got the advantage that he's played rugby, so it is a similar in, well, terms, of car- in terms of carrying physicality. the ball and that sort of thing. But, you know, once the pads come on, everything changes. You know, it's in my experience, watching guys, once the pads come on, then it gets a little, you know, it's different. The speed and it's high. The speed kind of kind of diminishes we'll a little see. bit because you got we'll pads. Some guys, some guys accelerate. Some guys decelerate. You don't yeah. know. 
That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you, so you, so. Like, like, like a, a great point Nick had made. He said, you know, Christian McCoy was a dis, thrist, dis throw before he came, you know, who he is. You never know what you're going to get. Maybe this kid, maybe the, you know, the wide receiver we need. Maybe, you know, the, maybe he's that guy. You don't know. You don't know. But again, maybe he's blocking for, maybe he's blocking for Brendan Rice, you know? <laughs> hey, 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 hello. I ain't going to get started today. I'm not. I leave all it alone. Right, it's all good. Now, I, but we got. But Nick, we, we, let, let's hear what Nick Bolton had to say about uh, you know the defense. Go ahead, uh, Nick. Yeah, I mean, he definitely wants. Uh, he wants to stay in Kansas City. I know uh, Spags, who just signed his three-year contract. Um, you know, it's indicated you know that he wants him around. And he quoted today: "It definitely feels like home. Staying here would be a blessing. It'd be a dream come true if we could get that done in the foreseeable future." Kansas City kid went to Mizzou. Has exceeded all expectations. He from day one, he's been a he's been an impact defender. Uh, Spags is using him perfectly. Um, you know, I think you want guys like this. You know, I think that since they signed Tranquil, I think Bolton's probably going to be the next guy. And then I think either you know the, the 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 center and the guard, you know, Humphreys and Smith are kind of probably next on the radar. But I think those three guys are pretty key central figure. But for me, for Bolton, you know, fortunately they had Tranquil last year who came in and did a terrific job running the defense and making the calls on defense. But Bolton, you know, a lot of people, uh, if you remember the, uh, the divisional round against the Bills, he saw that fade coming before and screaming to the sidelines as he's walking off. You know, they have a code word for what they think is going to be uh, a fake and, and they were prepared for it. So, um, he's smart. He can tackle. He can cover a little bit. Uh, but he's a guy you want in the middle of your defense. And him and Tranquil and and Leo Chanel next year are going to be they're going to be lights out. I, I cannot wait to watch all three of those guys on the field at the same time. Yeah. It's all about the money, right? <laughs> I mean, he just play. He's unfortunately he just pays a position plays a position that doesn't get paid in the NFL no. today's NFL. So. It's going to be a lot of recognition. Uh, it might be one of those situations where they don't extend them. They let them, you know, go to the market. They see that the market <laughs> isn't what it was. Mm -hmm. And either he signs a deal, you know, like uh, Willie Gay did in, in New Orleans, or he comes back to the Chiefs and takes the offer that that maybe they gave him that they didn't he he thought he was going to get a much bigger deal. So, but you cannot fault him because the, the smarts, the the awareness, how much Spags values him on the field, being kind of like that defensive coordinator on the field, can't put yeah. a price tag on that. But the NFL does, and right now the market for a kind of a middle linebacker isn't as great as the player would hope it would be. Well, I mean, at the same time, I like Bowden and, you know, money talks, money talks. It doesn't matter if you produce or not money talks, man. And you yeah. can't extend everybody, you know, but at the same time, the Chief, I believe <clears> the Chiefs <throat> got a lot of debt back there. If they possibly couldn't sign Bowden, they got, they got debt back to that at the linebacker position. So, you know, yeah, I mean they could always move Tranquil over if they, you know, they can't if they can't re-sign him, they can they could put Tranquil in the middle and just be just fine. And you know, Absolutely. if they if they draft another linebacker or two in this draft, then that kind of indicates that you know it could be an issue with the contract. But the good news is he wants to stay in Kansas City. The Chiefs would like to yeah. have him here. Um, usually when those two things match, um, they'll work out. So he'll, he'll take a team friendly deal. He knows that he's you know he's in a great situation. And it isn't like this need situation where it was like. I want to get paid period. I don't care who it is. Most definitely. You know, Most and, definitely. but, but this is a, this is a system guy that fits the system of the chiefs defensively perfectly. Um, so I, 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 I got a feeling they're going to work this one out. Yeah. I, agree. I, feel, I feel like I, I agree with that too. I, I feel like they're going to get that one done. If not, you know what I mean? He, he, he's a, he's like, they call him, you know, uh, he's, he's a Patrick Mahomes on defense. So, why not, man? And then they, uh, they, they, you know, they got depth at linebacker. But hey, if, if I'm gonna pay anybody, I'm gonna pay him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, he, he's a good <laughs> linebacker. Hey, yeah. The Chiefs won, won the Super Bowl um, 
the Super Bowl with the Eagles without him. You know what I mean? So with that, is said, he yeah, buried? Is he buried in Johnson? Is he buried in Johnson? I'm gonna throw a quick question out there. Is he buried in Johnson? Then Derek Johnson. Derek Johnson. Is buried in Derek Johnson. DJ. No. Is he buried in DJ? No, it's not close. I don't know. But it's one DJ. guy. No, I mean DJ can play all three positions, and I yeah. don't. I don't think Nick Bolton can. That dude was a playmaker. He was just had a bad. You know he was on the chiefs at a bad stretch where they just weren't very good. Yeah. And so he didn't get the, you know, the national attention, but in terms of speed recognition, <clears throat> he could cover, yeah. he could blitz. I mean, he could do anything. They didn't mm -hmm. use him a lot in blitz situations, but when they did, I would imagine his percentage was very high of either getting a quarterback hit sack strip, whatever he was, yep. you know, he was again, unfortunately yeah. he was just on bad teams. Yeah. And he got right. injured a lot too. I think he ripped his Achilles twice. You know, in his career, so that's 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 a bad sign. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, no, I think DJ was. Well, I would put DJ in the top five of linebackers in Kansas City history. Yeah. Well, I'll put it like this: Nick Bowden ain't having a long of a career like D, uh, Derek Johnson just yet. So I don't yeah. know. Do we, well, we I, think, I, think, I think I think I think Derek Johnson. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Is, is we speak in rings, you know, you know, like they do nowadays. You yeah, know, you got that's two different. Rings. I mean, I mean, oh, I mean, I mean, I mean, we do it. I mean, from that standpoint, yes, but at the same time, DJ was a leader too. He was a vocal leader. So Bowden was never that yeah. vocal leader. I mean, I think Bowden is in the locker room. I get that, but you can see DJ has <laughs> been the vocal piece in that defense. You knew who DJ was, and he was a playmaker. But what I'm saying is this: the reason I ask that question is because come to his contract extension, if DJ was, let's say DJ was on the team now with, with Bowden, right, and he had Woo. to be between the two, you be like, I'm going to DJ because of. of his characteristics and what he bring to the table. He has a whole package that's playing a linebacker. If you look at Bowden, Bowden is a silent assassin. He can get it done, but is he is he a guy that you can really trust? Is he the guy that can really trust? Can he really command that defense? The you know what I'm saying? The only, so, th the only thing Johnson has over Bolton, I think, is the speed. Other than that, I think all the intangibles, everything else, right. they're mm -hmm. either even – and again, if you talk to Buffalo, Spags, great tackle, Buffalo, great talk, tackle. If you though. talk talk yeah. to Spags in terms of just football instincts and IQ, he's putting Bolton up there with anybody he's ever had, including Antonio Pierce. So, yeah, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna okay. go with Spags on this one and say that all that stuff is in place. It's just the speed. I think is where it's a little bit different with Derek. Yeah, okay. I mean, and, you know, he. He was well thought of. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll share the draft story and DJ really quick. Um, he was number one on the board that year. And the Chiefs, I think, were at 16. This is the Aaron Rodgers draft, if I'm not mistaken. And uh -huh. the Aaron Rodgers thing kind of really messed everything up. And people kept waiting for him to be picked. And uh, I was actually privy that year to see the big draft board. And, uh, and DJ was, uh, was number one. And there were some really great players in that draft, especially in the first round. And they were like, they weren't, Carl Peterson was not going to make the trade, you know, to move up. They waited and they waited and they got to pick, I think, 11 and 12. And they were very optimistic. And then when they got him, they were, they were instantly, you know, instant gratification of how hard they worked at scouting him, how badly they wanted him without having to give up anything. And, you know, he was great from day one and injuries aside, and you make a good point, Lou. I think you look at him and and you look at Bolton and say, yeah, there's a lot of similarities. Um, he just was on some bad teams, and uh, you know, kudos to him for basically staying his entire career, you know, with the Chiefs, and and that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but getting some of these questions before we go uh, into the next sponsor. All right, let's uh, um, let's see. Uh, this is a good quote, I think, from Andy. Uh, talking about Kadarius Tony, uh, expect him to come back ripping and ready to go. We like Kadarius. I'm just a matter of having him on the field. Uh, you know, he's been working with Patrick, so um, I think that's really great. Special message from Pamela Todd. Love you, nephew. Yeah. He got so the young like Joker that. finished that album. He's yeah, nice. great at work now. Nice, nice. Young Joker's ready. Young Joe dropped the album. He dropped the release. Yeah. So when is it coming out? That's the real question. I don't know. I got yeah. yeah, I got an eye out on that. All right, Joseph Vizoksky, uh, sorry, buddy. Uh, uh, in regard to Rice, I bet he's out six weeks or better. Do we need to get another veteran? I, I think they're in on Tyler Boyd, um, uh, oh. DJ Chark. Um, I think Boyd makes the most sense because of his ability to, um, 
I, I think he runs a similar offense and he's playing for a great team. I think that definitely, that definitely helps. Um, let's see. Uh, Gary put a, another good point about Rasheed Rice. Everyone has made less than stellar decisions in days of yore. Uh, luckily, through uh, perseverance and dedication, I've let nothing get in the way of my downward spiral. And yeah, he, you know, we've all had bad moments in our life. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked about Anthony Miller. Um, Mango uh, a- answered the question. He was a futures contract in January. He's 29 years old, I think. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we don't really know what's left in the table. Um, but, you know, at this point, um, you know, he, he it's went just, to, he's a Memphis kid, went yeah. to the University of Memphis. I think he played with mm-hmm. Houston and he was in Chicago. I think <laughs> Nagy was with him in Chicago. Maybe that has something to do with that. That probably take, does. Take, taking a shot. Yeah. Uh, he really never played a whole lot you know, there in Chicago. So, you know, it's right. just another guy to have in camp and we'll see, you know, once they compete, if he steps up, because obviously there's openings, you know, no one has come, yeah. you know, no one's yeah. come to the fore outside of Rashid. This is so. a wide open group, man. It's, it's definitely, Most it's definitely, definitely. it is wide open, but you know, we'll see. We will definitely right, see. Uh, the uh, cream uh, going to uh, rise to the top. I'll tell you that. That's right. That's right. Shout out to Macho Man. And there's some more questions and it said uh biggest kareem put this go ahead and read them uh i can't say claire rice's biggest mistake was leaving the scene i think that's what most people have a problem with but i agree it doesn't seem like a really it does seem like he's a really good kid overall and again i read the police report it doesn't he's not been charged for leaving the scene uh of an accident so i I'm not sure that's lumped into something else or has Very another Very curious if he's not, right? I mean, they have yeah, a video. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> again, you know, the, the, the charges were a formality. The report was a formality. They met with his agent. I mean, they met with his lawyer. They met with Rice. He was, he was forthright. He was honest. He accepts responsibility immediately, even though he's going to plead no guilty, not guilty, um, so they can work out a plea agreement, and they will. Um, so, I, and I think at the end of the day, again, he shouldn't have left. I think this would have been a different conversation, um, but I don't think he knew what to do. And again, I say this all the time, and you know, and you guys have mentioned it too. You just got to get outside your entourage sometimes. You just got to let you, let you know, let these guys go, and and you got to understand your responsibility is not just to mm-hmm. you know yourself; um, it's to a whole lot of people. The, the the Chiefs are the you know next to Manchester United. And maybe the New York Yankees are are one of the most identical franchises in history because of their recent success. And that's not going to go away. And everybody's coming after them. And people are going to come after Rice now. And uh, again, like I said earlier in my opening uh, mon, uh, my o- opening conversation and thoughts, just let it play out. Let the kid earn his trust back and make amends. And let's all move forward because, again, a lot of guys have done far worse, far worse. Go ahead and get I this agree. one in. Go. All go right. Ahead. Andy Reid says the team is looking wide receiver, offensive tackle positions as an option in round one, but add it's a long wait until pick 32. Last year, we saw the run of wide receivers in the twenties. And I know the chiefs had their eyes on one of those guys and uh, they ended up taking the local kid. In other um, words, I'm going to say a bunch of words here, not mean any of it. Not going to mean a damn thing. And in, sh- in short, <laughs> we will take the best player available. It could be a nose <laughs> tackle for all we know. Line. Who knows? It could be. It could be a nose tackle. It could be wide receiver. It could be a cornerback. Um, yeah, and, uh, no. Lastly, on the topic, Merrill Lee Trahan, he's taking responsibilities for his actions, so that shows his type of character. He will learn from this and be better for it. Amen. Amen, Merrill Lee. I definitely agree. All right, you got it. Why are you? And, 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 <laughs> and, and like I said, we got to get into the sponsors. If you're tired of rent, you want to get you a nice house, you're tired of being on the edge with your current landlord, go ahead and go ahead and speak with <laughs> Dave Purdy. Go That's ahead. right. Give Dave Purdy a call. He has switched companies to Edge Home Finance. They are the company that got our mortgage finished. Uh, we closed the house on Friday. Uh, it was a lengthy process, but uh. Uh, Dave and, and, and his boss and, and the company uh, got it done. Uh, it's it's very difficult to buy a house these days. I'm telling you, to get financing if you're self-employed is basically probably one of the worst experiences that you can have. You need guys that you can trust. You can guys who can deliver, can finish the job, 
and fulfill the promises they made. And they backed it all up and they got the work done. And that's because Dave Purdy is really a good person. He's a good friend and he knows this business. And he understands it. So if you're looking for a mortgage, give him a call at 816-405-5831. We all love Dave because he is pretty good. Purdy good. There we go. We, go. we, need, we need the crowd here, Nick. Yeah, we need By to come up one. with it. We need to come up with a like a like a like a like a you know like a 300 people saying pretty good all the time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think just would, a small note, whether you you may or may not know. Dave did join the show briefly on Friday. He he did. So I, he, he, did he, stepped out, he stepped out of the negotiations for a bit. So, yeah. hey, guys, here, here you go. We'll give you some love. He was trying Let's to carry go. my weight. It was a it was a it was a it was a long Friday. Let's just put it that way. But again, it, it doesn't matter. It all got done and everybody did what they said they were going to do. And and, uh, you know, it's not uh, it, 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 it's just it, the distance it takes. In the end of the day, the juice is worth the squeeze. And uh, again, uh, Emily's happy, uh, Mrs. Chiefs Blitz, and that's all that matters to me. All right. and, and speaking, of, speaking of somebody else is happy, Patrick Mahomes is happy to have Hollywood on the team. So what you got to say about that, Nick? Yeah, well, oh, man, there he is, the Terminator. Um, <laughs> Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes, quote, I've been pleasantly surprised by Hollywood Brown's route running ability. Ability, I believe that's something he can we can emphasize in our offense. In other words... This guy knows how to run the routes already. That Patrick Mahomes needs him to run. And again, I think this was the this was the best wide receiver signing for the right team, the best fit, um, the best situation, the most to prove, and the most to gain. And uh, I mean, Hollywood Brown. I mean, since the day after he had his press conference in Kansas City and signed his contract, where was he? He was in Texas with Patrick and Bobby's troop, and they were working out. And he set the tone for all the guys that hadn't even showed up yet. Now, Rasheed Rice was down there at the time as well, so we got to give him props for that too. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, Brown is just that kind of that missing piece. And when Rice comes back, and depending on the adjustment period it's going to take for him to get, you know, up to NFL speed again, the combination of those two guys plus a draft pick, you know, plus maybe Kadarius Tony. Uh, maybe Sky Moore, maybe Watson, uh, maybe there's a surprise veteran signing. It's just going to give Patrick Mahomes more options to, to to be successful. But to me, this was the this is I think their biggest offensive signing. Probably, I'm not going to say in the Veach era, but I'm going to say probably pretty close to the top. Absolutely, because you know they kind of rolled the dice with the group last year, thinking that they would improve over the previous year that they would step up <laughs> meaning Kadarius Tony meaning Sky mm -hmm. Moore and it didn't happen and I don't think they ever want to be in that position again as long as Patrick's the quarterback he's got to have the weapons and his, if he has the weapons then the offense just becomes even more deadly kudos to them for figuring out how to right. win games last year with mm -hmm. a limited offense but uh yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I think Hollywood's got every chance you know to to kind of prove and, and even Patrick said that pleasantly surprised we're almost like well we kind of thought or he thought maybe he's just a one trick pony but hey I'm seeing that maybe he isn't so all signs point to him being in a position to have a great year it's just up to him make the catches that are there and you're going to be fine yep no, he's so the number one guy. It? Honestly, the dude is appreciatable for inter introducing me to this particular subject. Now, um, no, Hollywood's phenomenal. Hollywood got hands. He's everything they wanted Rice to become. Like Hollywood mm -hmm. Brown, been him. He, he got experience. He's been in two different type of offenses. He played with dynamic quarterbacks. So he's prepared to play with Patrick Mahomes. And he mm -hmm. can get deep down the field. And again, he can run every route. I stay. I stated this before. What? What? Well, man, what? What? John Maddox, what, what and now, now you kind of missed me there. So you said he played with them, you know great quarterbacks. Who I ain't say great. I said dynamic. I said I said dynamic, not great. John Maddox, you, that, uh, you can't use Lamar Jackson, Kyle Murray, and he played with a with a space guy, <laughs> the spaceman himself. He, he played. He played. He played one snap with Kyle Murray. One snap. No, 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 no. We know we're not gonna go there, sir. No, he played. But the point is this though. Point is, weren't they, he played, weren't they in Oklahoma he played, he played, together? 
I talk about so, NFL, so 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 he played so he NFL, played with a lot of dynamic he played with a lot yeah. of dynamic quarterback Lamar Kyler Murray right two two studs already two great studs so he's prepared himself to play with a Patrick Mahomes he yeah is. so that's not so so there's nothing really you can say about how he was like anything bad about him because he experienced playing with that type of player getting out the pocket mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson getting out the pocket making plays. How LeBron mm-hmm. been? He was that number one guy over there in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kyler Murray did the same thing with Kyler Murray, getting out the pocket when the play breaks down. Who's there? Hollywood Brown. So Hollywood Brown mm-hmm. has that experience. He's the guy that Mr. Bolton think Brandon Rice should be. You know what I'm saying? Right. He's the guy I think Brandon Rice <laughs> should be. So again, I, I told you guys, I'm not starting on Brandon Rice today. You, you hey, was, but but know, at the same am. time, Hollywood <laughs> Brown fits perfectly with with Patrick Mahomes. He's the Patrick Mahomes guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they already look like they're in sync right there. You know, they're they're best already. buddies all of a sudden. Somehow already. they managed to both stay in the frame. I see that. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> again, again, I feel like I feel like this is a receiver that you know when when Brandon Rice, I mean, not Rasheed Rice, she Rice get y'all situated, and we go get a wide receiver in the second round. I feel like they ain't gonna go wide receiver in the first round. They probably surprise me if they do. Uh, because I feel like they're gonna go cornerback there to be to be honest with you guys. I feel like they're gonna go cornerback, you know. What I mean, they probably go cornerback TJ Temple, but again, again, uh, I feel like you know, Hollywood, yeah, yeah he's fixed, he fixed the scheme, he, he's he's fast. This can be his this is contract. He, he going to one year, this is you know, this contract, you know, what I mean, you got to come out, you want that big money. Um, so I feel like he's gonna give his all. Like I told you, I'll be on, on the previous shows. I feel like this guy is gonna have 13, 1400 yards this season. Some people said no. Some people said I don't see. Well, that I happening. said I, I said no. Yeah, I think Lou said no too. But then again, oh, uh, I said, close to no, okay. close, close, you want to put you want to put words you want to put words in our mouth first <laughs> off. Here, here you go, hence. Yeah, yeah. I said that within the office. Now, this was before Rasheed, you know, had his little situation here. So, if he's out, then he is going to get a lot more opportunity. Yeah, he will. But well, definitely, if, definitely. but the thing is, if they, if some, if one of these other guys steps up, the ball is going to be spread around a lot more. Now, mm-hmm. Travis's numbers, I think, and, and targets will probably <clears throat> diminish a little bit in the regular season. So that'll okay. give the receivers a little bit more of a sprinkling of, of targets. But in order to get 1,300 yards, he's going to have to, yeah. again, if none of the others step up, it's like by force or by that. <laughs> you just got to do mm-hmm. it. So uh, I don't think that number is out of the question. It's just if they've got other guys available, it's going to be hard to get 1,300 spreading it, the ball around so much. Mm-hmm. So who, if you out there, who's gonna get that number five jersey? Drake, is you getting that number five? You putting on that number five? You know, you he was your number. guy. There. Yeah, is you gonna get that five jersey? I think I am. I think I am gonna go. So five. wait, wait. So you go from four to five. Now make hey. it make sense. Now where you at? Now where you at? You with the four? You with the five? Where were you at? I'm, I'm five four, man. I'm five. With the four five? You, are you, are you are four five? Or are you with the four? Anyway, it goes. The Hollywood Brown is Chiefs. a great addition. He's a great addition. Well, you know, it's what it is. So, so what? What? what uh, Hollywood what Brown's better than he better than Brandon Rice. <clears throat> uh, Miners and Mingo said Hollywood Brown is wide receiver number one. Do you Absolutely. guys agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, he has to. He is at this point. No question. He's been number one in Baltimore. He's been number one in uh, Arizona. And Marilee, Marilee been sticking to the guns. She said, I am not jumping on Hollywood's uh, <laughs> until I actually plays a game. Sorry, God. Shout out that's to Lou. Fine. Shout out you're to Lou. That's some, that's, from, some, that's some Lewis say. That's some Lewis you're, from, you're, from, you're from Missouri. It's a show me state. You got to show me, man. You can talk all you want. Let's get let's get out there. And if, he, like, if he like bombs oh. away that opening night, first game of the year, you know, and the, and the, and the hype is real then. Right. Hey, you know what's catches, crazy, Lou? Real quick, that's how, deep ones. that's how. <laughs> hey, that's how Patrick Mahomes did it. Remember his first time, really <laughs> lobbing it up through, through that deep ball, and then boom, yeah. boom. there it go, boom, there it go. Ecstasy. Frank, Frank from Frank from Toronto, to Toronto, Toronto. Right, correct, said it right, correct. Yep, yep. He said, "No need to add a veteran uh, wide receiver. We got KT. Kadarius Tony will be that guy this season. Money talks. 
his performance this year. He is getting a contract. Yeah, Don't worry, it's 20 and he's 20, only 25 years old. Hey, well, hold, on, Frank, like, hold on, hold on, Frank. Hold on, Frank. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're not gonna butter that biscuit. All right, we all know we're not gonna butter that biscuit. All no, right, no, nah, I, we're, I, not, still, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. No, I am still number 19 too. So give me all the guys. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna butter that biscuit. No, we're not. No, proven to prove it. Prove you are him. You got to prove it. Young, Until then, Hollow young, Brown number one. Young Joker love. I'm here for it. Way to go, Frank. Love. Step up. <laughs> hey, 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 Lou got faith in you, Frank. Lou get got faith the, in you. Get out Your on boy got to see it. Your boy got to see it. Get out, get out it. on that limb. Catch passes mm-hmm. when, hey, when the game's online, catch the passes, Joker. Catch mm-hmm. the pass. Then you'll get my respect. Until then, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear nothing so, about the joke. I'm, I'm, I don't want to hear. Here. So I'm, I'm hearing rumors that you know, right. like he said, he said he probably, you know, it's a lie. You know, uh, you know, 32 is a long time to wait. I feel like any Reed's gonna jump up in the first round. They probably jump up to number ten. I'm, I'm hearing. That's why I'm hearing, man. That's why I'm hearing for my guy, my guy, and my my guy only, man. The the, the baby have told me. The secret, uh-huh. the, the return source. of the big head, beautiful. <laughs> he uh, told me, turn of the skillet. <laughs> the he told me they go. <laughs> he is he the source. That's, that, that's that's pretty. That's pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky's kid. Pretty Ricky. <laughs> hey, what pretty. Where, 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 where'd he go, man? Uh, he, he, like, blew, he blew up. I think he got. I think he got slapped on the wrist. He was too good. He was too good. He was some somehow. He was leaking information before anybody else, and now he's and now he's gone. gone. He won't be back anytime soon. I don't. I don't think that the. I think he lost his phone privileges. So I think what what hence oh, wow. hence was so much got, controversy hence, hence over was, this guy, pretty Ricky. So much controversy. Hence, hence was alluding to Nick. You, Brock Bowers is in uh, Florham Park, New York today, visiting with the Jets. Uh, yeah. First. First day of uh, OTAs, Aaron Rodgers. Supposedly. Where do I go to? Where do I go to ruin the first part of my career? I go play Aaron, with the Jets. Uh, Aaron, Aaron uh, Rodgers Nick showed up. Silly, Nick is silly. We'll go. We'll, where I go to ruin my career? Where's the first place I go? I go to the, the last Jets. place you want to go. Where the aging Aaron Rodgers? You couldn't well, go to a worse place, place with that talent. Line. I Couldn't go to a worse place with that talent. But Nick, imagine oh, yeah, this, Nick, if, if, Brock, if, if the Chiefs move up and they do grab Brock Bowers, hypothetical, and they grab Brock Bowers, how would you feel? How would uh, you feel? I think, I think I think Joe Alder, Brock Bowers, you do whatever you have to to get them. Yeah. I think they're game changers. I Good think they're going to change the franchise for the next ten years. They both are fits. I mean, I'm still holding out hope, you know, for for Joe Alder. I mean, I just think. You just I don't care if it costs me a first they, they get third. It, nah, if they get Joe off. They, they oh, get Joe I don't, I don't they, care what it they costs. Repeat. They repeating. They repeating. They You're get talking Joel. about his dad, his dad played for the Chiefs for, what, nine, ten years? He oh, was a wow. standout left tackle. And Joe is so think about arguably it. already Paul, better. Joe Tooney. That's true, Nick. That's true. Green Humphrey, Trey Smith, and Taylor? You got more. That's heck of that. That'd be heck of a 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 heck now yeah. listen, 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 listen. Hollywood Brown would get his thousand plus. You get a Joe Alt over there. He is he gonna get his thousand plus. Yards this year. Right? Like, you, know, you, know, you know, those are the only like, two guys. Those are the only two guys in the draft we, that I would go. We, all I agree. I agree. We, 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 we I get agree. we get closer. We get we getting closer to the sound. You know, guys, we getting closer to when we first start hearing that sound. And that, that pick gonna be ears. in. That music to my that, ears. Well, I love that, that, that sound. Pick, I love it. That, that pick is gonna be in, guys. And you know, I know I've been high on Brandon Rice. You know I me, mean? I was, but Dre know how I like to do the smoke screen. Everybody mm-hmm. like to do a smoke screen. Everybody mm-hmm. know who what kid I've been bringing in, but they forgot. See, I put the smoke around their head, and they forgot who, all about it. Nick. Who are you it's hiding it Brian, from? This is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell? Who's who? Who are you hiding it from? Right, no, Lou, talk to him, Lou. <laughs> hey, he wasn't hiding nothing. Come on, the smoke screen. Come on, but you playing chess. <laughs> okay, but obviously, but obviously, my pick is if, if if he pleads, if he's there, if he's there, the Chiefs jump up in this round. It's got to be Brian Thomas Jr. It's got to be. Dre knew I was going there. Dre we're going, knew I, going full. We're going full circle now. Right back to the beginning. <laughs> right back. See, to the, it, came right, it came right back I to threw, the circle. Shout out to the circle. I, threw, I, I, threw I don't know if you give up that much for them. 
I, I, I just don't. But Brian, that, Brian that, that's Ren, that's, 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 that's Randy Moss in the making. I'm uh, telling you guys. I know. I, I, I don't disagree with you, but I just think that. You need that stud that he would, be, that, that, to me is he would just, be in the top five to move up, but I don't think, yeah. I don't think he, I think he'll go past 10. So, mm-hmm. yeah, do y'all guys um, in comment again, section yeah. believe should we move up to get a Brian Thomas? Go, should we get a Brian Thomas yeah. though? Really? No, you can have four or five quarterbacks go in the first not to round, move up, though. and that'll mess everything up. up, right? Not to move yeah, up, uh, the, the offense, the, the tackles. The quarterbacks, you know, again, depending on how many right. of those those go for, I mean, there's going to be a lot of guys pushed down. So then there is more of an ability for the Chiefs to move up because they won't have to move up as far. So it, in a situation where they can move into the 20s and Brian Thomas is there, maybe, but well, you know who I so, who I'm going so, for. So, so oh, wait, 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 have you have you been watching the show, right? AD I just want to know from right may, now. You, from right now, I, Lou. I may <laughs> have I for? may have mentioned it before, but AD Mitchell, wide receiver, Texas, is one of my uh, favorites. He uh, is an AD Mitchell guy. <laughs> I just, just want to make sure you were like Bowtie over here. Or hell, up they'll just me. switching up on me, man. I'm not just switch, I'm not switching, uh, up. switching up on me. So AD Mitchell, smoke screen. There's a guy that's going to fall at 32 <laughs> that no matter who it is, no matter what position it is, everybody's going to be saying, how in yep. the hell did we let the Chiefs get we... that guy? <laughs> and it's fill in the blank. Whoever There's five or is. six guys. There's five or so, six offensive so guys. Mitchell, we got, we got Brock Bowers. We got Brian <laughs> Thomas. We got A.D. Mitchell. Now, y'all know me being a particular fan of another 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 side. You know what I'm saying? You know, mine's more of a Harrison. Mines is Marvin Harrison, man. That's all day for me. So we all got our yeah, legitimate picks. I know. Yeah, I just said it there. Yeah, Thank you. I just, I just said Marvin, that, sir. What Marvin right. Harrison got? He, he's made it pretty clear he wants to play for the Colts and nobody else. So no, that's what Nick, I heard it. Nick, I heard it. Nick, I heard that. I heard that's it. Nick, said, I was disappointed. He said it. I was, I was disappointed. I said, I get the legacy. I do. Get he it. wants to play where his daddy played, and I, I, I think that puts a lot of pressure on on, on Ballard. Well, you would, would that, you will be, you will be picked. Hey, we, we are dropping down. Then, if that's the case, we'll be dropping down. So you guys should drop down. To be honest with you, yeah, that's true. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, 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 Nick right. They they should they should fall down. They, they, they should they should the Cardinals should back up and get more picks. You know, trade at number four with the Chiefs, and we just get y'all a second round pick. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but when you, when you hear that sound, they're gonna say, and they get a punter. The Chiefs <laughs> <Brian> <laughs> they get a punter. <laughs> Brian Thomas Jr. is is on the Kansas City Chiefs, but but again, that's that's where you know I'm just joking with you guys. But again, hey. like a lot, of, a lot of people was asking y'all a lot of questions before we close out this show. Uh, Which a lot one of was, was the smoke screen? So now is Brian Thomas a smoke screen too? Again, you're Who knows? Keeping, I, like, I think they're all, all a smoke screen. All under wraps. Hey, Nick, good point, Nick. Uh, uh, good point. Uh, good point, Nick. Uh, good point. The, the smoke screen, Jay though. Jay though. What, what, who is the smoke screen, Drake? I don't know who knows. I don't know. I mean, no one thought they were going to take. No one had to Chiefs and Trent McDuffie, you know, tied right. to one another. Nobody. Hey, what? What if the Chiefs get a kicker in the first round? It no, was shocked. Ho- it was shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm that, I think Harrison that's, Bucker's head would explode. You hear that sound? You hear that yeah, sound? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust anybody else but Harrison <laughs> Bucker right now. <laughs> oh, I'm on the floor. Yeah. I get a punter. Oh, but now, close out. The, the people had some questions about. I know they was tweeting at uh, you guys and uh about the picks about the uh the show on Friday. They was, mm-hmm. they, I know I seen one about uh, Lou explaining uh, your pick for this for your um about uh, uh AD Mitchell. Why why are you so why are you so high on him? They didn't want him to know. Well, it's more so positioning. I don't put him a, ahead of like the top three. I don't put him ahead of Harrison Neighbors, Adunze. Mm-hmm. You know, not ahead of those guys. I'm saying of the guys after them that mm-hmm. has the best opportunity to be an elite wide receiver in the NFL, I think is A.D. Mitchell just because of the athleticism, the fact that he catches everything, his drop rate is next to zero, mm-hmm. and he's done it at two <clears throat> huge programs on national championship type levels. So he, just everything to me points to that the speed the hands yeah. route running ability now if he puts on a little bit of weight and gets the right opportunity i just think he has a real shot to be the best in this group at very least the fourth 
if you believe those top three guys are mm -hmm. unreachable as far as the Chiefs are concerned. So right. being able to pick him in the 20s is a huge value, and I think it would just be dead on, let's roll. Yeah. Mm, and so I, I think – like, like – go ahead, Bo. You're good. A lot, a lot of people um, was also asking, um, do, do you think they go – I know he had like some uh, some foot issues, but um, do you think that Chiefs go uh, Kool-Aid uh, McKenzie at number 32? I, if he I, would, him. I would not be upset with that either. I mean, I think they need, you know, you can never have enough secondary. I mean, they're going to go up against some really elite quarterbacks this year. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's good. You know, he comes from a great program. I mean, he's got every intangible you want uh, for a young defender and he'd be a perfect fit. Um, I just don't think he's going to be there at 32. I think, I think the surprise would be if one of the nose tackles falls uh, to 32 and somebody the chiefs maybe had in the, 16 to 20 range falls down to 32 and you know they need a nose tackle uh you know that they that they signed Pinnell for one year um um you know and i think that that's a guy who, who's proven himself uh but who knows i mean that's the beauty I mean, what i wouldn't put him in the class of a nose tackle but <clears throat> i've talked about this guy a little bit as johnny or jazan newton from illinois Mm -hmm. That again, I, I I truly believe if he had played at a you know one of the high, I guess the the more visible programs in the Big yeah, Ten, I see uh, played at, he played at Ohio State or Michigan or even Penn State, he would be much higher, more highly regarded. But again, that's just in the press and and whatever. I think NFL teams probably have him rated much higher than mm -hmm. we think they that they do. And I wouldn't be shocked if you saw that guy picked in the top 15. But yeah. if somehow he was to fall, that would I would I would maybe even supersede the wide receiver pick. I would go ahead and take him. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I, I would not be shocked if it's a defensive player in the first round. Build a wall. Build a wall. Chris Jones and if him they, next to each other, that would they, be something. Yeah. If they go – like, honestly, guys, honestly, the best pick for the best position, Kansas City's in a great spot regardless of the fact because they can go get any stud mm -hmm. at 32. So, it really, it really don't matter. But we just got our guys that we think the Chiefs should go after. Like, Brock Bowers, to me, would be a great fit for Kansas City. You okay. know, Kelsey going to on the, on the not not on the decline as far as athleticism, but you know he's getting older now. You know, he's, yeah, he's, he's not older now. You need somebody that can fulfill that need and still be. And Kelsey can be a good guy to to teach. Mm -hmm. you sure, know, Bowers. That's the best part. The ropes. And he's yeah. not a true, you know, he's not a true tight end. He plays the tight end position at Georgia because that's where they need to line him up on the field. But you know, he can play any. He can he can be in the backfield. He can be inside. He can be outside. And again, tough, Andre, tough. you make a great point. You've got Travis Kelsey for at least – I think Travis is going to play two more years. That's it. I think he's going to be done after that. But he's got a guy who he can groom and work with right. and learn from. That's why right. if the Jets take him at 10, he'll be either traded in year three or he'll be out after year five, and his mm. career is going to be plateaued because he's not going to have mm. success long-term in New York, not with that coaching mm. staff and, and not with the Rodgers playing a year, maybe two tops. Um, no, you need a guy, you need a guy who's, who he can learn from. And, and there there's go. no learning in New York. Um, it's survival mm -hmm. of each player in each position because Aaron Rodgers is running the show with a head coach at Robert Saleh, who's just in way over his head. And, uh, uh if I'm on Bowers, I want the money, but that's not where I want to go. Absolutely. Good point. Now guys, now guys, we are two weeks away, right? Correct. Maybe. Uh, we, we are uh, 10 week days from, away from week the from day yeah, 10 days away from round one. 10 days from round one. 10 sleeps. Uh, 10, 10 sleeps. sleeps. Now, that's, what my son, that's what my son what? says, sleeps. Uh, <laughs> I like that, 10 sleeps. What, is, 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 is you going to have a draft party? Like, what you going to eat on that draft day? What's your routine <laughs> on draft day? What is Nothing. Your... Nothing. <laughs> no, our, my, our draft is going to consist of being on this screen together uh, for three straight <laughs> days. And that's it. <laughs> Pen, pen, pen and paper. Pen and <laughs> paper, paper man. Maybe, maybe some water. Maybe the shock, maybe the little, shock and awe little, of it all. The cross little, out. Little, little Jack yeah. Daniels for the end of the night. But other than that, a little love at the end of the night. Yeah. A little I love. I don't, no I don't need distractions. Come on, Hens. <laughs> no distractions. Nope. Nope. You know, nope. That's what I said. I, I was trying to see it. Everybody like me, man. Jay, we we be going back and forth. Highlights. Looking mm -hmm. at highlights and everything else. You know, breaking down mm -hmm. the players. But that's what we're looking for. But one guy that you are looking for. If you're looking for a house, is Eric Hank. 
Go right That's in. Right. Let's talk about our our sponsors first up. Mr. Eric Haynes with the Eric Haynes Group. You can reach Eric at 816-729-3785. He is your trusted real estate advisor. He was my trusted real estate advisors. He made sure that we closed. He made sure that all the documents were, were dotted with the I's and the proper T's. Everything was done from start to finish. We got our keys. We're in our house. Um, well, we're in the process of working in the house at the moment. But again, it's complicated out there to buy a house these days. You got to have someone who knows the business, somebody who trusts you, someone's going to be a bulldog for you. And that's Mr. Eric Haynes, 816-729-3785 or reach him, uh, email esalskc at gmail.com. Prot sponsor, Chief Who? That is correct. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side of the coin, if you buy a house, you got to find a company that can fund it. And that's what Dave Purdy did with Edge Home Finance. They are the mortgage company that got my deal done. Again, very complicated. I've been very honest about it. Uh, because you need to make sure you find somebody that can get the job done at the end of the day. There's always a snag. There's always an issue. Underwriters look at things different ways, but you need someone who's going to pound, pound the desk until they finally get it done. And that's what Dave and his boss did. And we really appreciate it. So if you're looking for a guy who's going to hold your hand, get you through the process and find you the best interest rate. I mean, I got a killer, killer interest rate um, out of the out, out of this company. And uh, that's what you want. You know, every 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 penny counts. And if you want someone who's going to understand all that, understands the process, understands how to get good rates, Dave Purdy's an expert. Give him a call at 816-405-5831. We all love Dave because he is pretty Purdy good. good. Absolutely, absolutely. So so let's go ahead and give a couple of shout outs in the uh, comment section. Now, Miss Mango, you know, his Wi-Fi got up to date, so he's been back and forth. <laughs> um, Jerome Buckner, Marilyn uh vincent absolutely um, hey vincent where's Kareem, our salsa man come on <laughs> where's the, the hot salsa the hot the spicy salsa right kareem you know what's going on kareem he's on a roll he you know he managed to stop in i appreciate the love and st Clair. what's going on st Clair? frank what's going on frank and gary of course the auntie of the show miss uh mrs todd uh <laughs> let's see here am i missing anybody bo am i missing anybody sir since you uh, we got uh, you, you mentioned Ken Sinclair, Frank Kansoris, absolutely. Uh, um, uh, Joseph Zaskzi. Now I'm that's sorry, the one yeah. I didn't mention. Now that that's yeah. a name the only Nick can pronounce. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the name only Nick, Nick can pronounce. And, Lego and, and, yeah, Mango. Major props to Mr. Mango uh, for all of his work. In fact, Mr. Mango and I are going to have a conversation here shortly. Uh, so I'm going to give him, I'm going to reach out to him. So expect that, uh, expect that instant connection. message very Love soon. Love the connection, man. Um, he's done a really great job. He's been he, one of our, He's you know, going to be part of our international. I think he's going to be part of our inner circle. I just got to work it out. And Frank, too. We got to get Frank in there. Got to get Frank. And Frank needs to heads up the uh, the four guys in a bar, Chief Splits, Toronto group. And mm. uh, uh, Mr. Mango can uh, can work in his end of the world, too. So Let's build this brand up, let's guys. Let's build the brand up nationally. You know, who knows? Let's you know? get it, man. We can, we can do this. We got nothing else to do, so we might as well uh -huh. just do this well. <laughs> so oh, but again, guys. guys, we are 10 sleeps away from hearing what? 10 sleeps away. The pick is in, boy. The pick is in. Oh, no. You're going to hear some team say what? Oh no! We suck again. <laughs> After they didn't think they picked. Boy, so again, that that noise again. right there is so legendary. <laughs> that 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 draft, that ding, that is legendary, man. It's great stuff. <laughs> it scares you too. Like what? I just oh. I just want the uh, I want the residual rights on that piece. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Well, the, to that's, tell that's, you. that's my uh, that's my text message uh, sound. You know, notification sounds when nice. Uh, you know, around football season, my wife was like, "Turn that off." She did grab my phone, turn it off now. But again, but again, right, guys, guys, thank you guys for joining in. Uh, continue to share the show, continue to uh, leave comments. Um, if you got you know some stuff that you want to let us know off the, off Eric, man, go ahead and feel free to inbox us. So, with that said, guys, we will see you guys Wednesday with Chiefs. Who the hottest game on the Who's internet? It gonna right Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna so be? Who's it gonna be? So, with that said, guys, we'll see you guys Wednesday. All right, guys, peace out. Bye.